No, unfortunately, I mean, this is one of, you know, it's, it's a horrible data point that no one is surprised by. But I think what maybe is surprising is how big the disparity can be. Uh, even before the pandemic, as you pointed out, the numbers were pretty bad. About, if we pick on eighth graders, about one third of eighth graders were proficient in math. That number has now gone to about one fourth of eighth graders are now proficient in math. But as you pointed out, it's even worse in places where you have a lot of uh, low income students, students from more historically under-resourced communities. Uh -huh. For example, Detroit went from 6% of kids proficient to 3% proficient. So this is a huge, huge problem. And, you know, there's been a lot of finger pointing and hand wringing around. Is it because some places close sooner or later or other factors? Uh, but the reality is not correlating with any of that. The reality is, and, and this is something that, you know, we, we've been pushing as a not-for-profit for a long time, which is in a traditional environment, there's, it's just very not forgiving. If students don't get a concept, especially in math, so it's not a coincidence that math scores have fallen more, that they start falling further and further behind, even though the class keeps moving on. Uh, we just had some studies that say the opposite story, that if students are able to get even 30 to 60 minutes of practice uh, on platforms like Khan Academy, once again, we're not for profit, we offer it for free to the world, everyone listening can use it. We also have tutoring on schoolhouse.world, also free, also not for profit. Yeah. But if students get that type of intervention 30 to 60 minutes a week, they were growing 40% faster than pre-pandemic norms. Yeah, but, the, the, so you know, Sal, here's the thing. You're right. This is going to become politicized. And people are going to try to find every data point that backs up, well, if the closures did it, no, the, and then you're trying to, you know, in, they had to keep the teachers safe. Everybody's right because nobody, everybody's got their own point of view and no one's going to change their minds at this point. Let's just be clear. But, but the reality is, and I have a friend who's a principal of a middle school in a working class area of New Jersey. He told me, and I said it on the air, that during the lockdowns, 20 to 30 percent of his kids would zoom in on any given day. One third of the kids would actually participate online in any form. I said, where are the other 70 percent? He says, we, we don't know. And we're not allowed to go looking for them. No, I, you know, to some degree, that story puts in stark relief what's happening. I, I also sometimes point out that even when you're in a physical classroom, you don't know which kids are actually zoomed in and which kids are not are zoomed out. As I said, the numbers were pretty bad even before that. The solution in my head, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of hand wringing, finger pointing, and it's hard yeah. to correlate. The, the only correlation is really with wealth and education of the parents, the parents that had the resources, that have the Internet connections, that have the education. Even when the kids were falling behind, they, they're able to get that extra support. They're yeah. able to help the students. They put their kids on Khan Academy. We see that night and day. We just need to figure out how to get more into classrooms, how to get more families aware that there are resources out there that are free, that are not for profit. Uh, teachers need to realize this. And then I think we have a fighting because chance. What's gonna, yeah, well said, because what's going to happen is the adults, quote, adults are going to argue about the politics of this while hundreds of thousands, if not more than a million kids are just going to be steamrolled by the system, fall behind. How, how capable is it, how possible is it to bring a kid back up once they lose this kind of stuff and for, you know what, we got to go. Sal, we'll get you back on again soon. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.